In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Inkscape to draw objects that have a complicated contour to them. And a good example of this would be these eyeglass frames, which I've created here for this demonstration. So I'll be showing you how to create this. Before we get started though, if you want to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where I go over every tool and feature in this software, and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. So I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. And with that out of the way, let's get started. So let me move this out of the way, and I'm going to get started by drawing a rectangle. So I'm going to grab my squares and rectangles tool, and I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'll grab my selection tool and I want to size this rectangle at 400 by 200 pixels. So for the width, I'll put in 400 and then for the height, I'll put in 200. Now we want to convert this to a path by going to path and selecting object to path. And I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. Now I'm going to grab my nodes tool and I'm going to click and drag over these two nodes right here to select both of them. And I want to enable this option up here in the toolbar that says show transformation handles for selected nodes. I'm going to turn that on and that's going to give us transformation handles for these selected nodes. And I'm going to hold control and shift and I'm just going to scale these two nodes in about this far. Now, if you look at the bottom left of the screen, it'll show you how much you're scaling it by. For this demonstration, I'm going to scale it by about 70%. It doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere thereabouts is good enough. And once you do that, you can go ahead and disable this setting that we just enabled. And now that that's done, I'm just gonna click and drag this top edge right here to give this a nice curved contour. And I'll do the same thing down here. I'm gonna click and drag this down as well to give that a rounded contour. And maybe I'll bring that up a little more. And I'll do the same thing over here on the side edges of the glass frame or the eyeglass frame. So now we're going to take these corners and make them rounded. So I'm going to come up here to the toolbar and I'm going to select this option right here that says add corners LPE. And once you do that, click and drag over all four nodes right there. And we're going to take this rounded node and bring that in. And as you can see, as I do that, it's rounding the corner of those nodes. Now, right about there looks good. Once I do that, I'm going to click on just this node right here and I'm going to make this one a little extra rounded. And that right there is about the effect we're going for. So I'm going to finalize this now by coming back up here to the toolbar and selecting this option that says object to path when you hover your cursor over it. Click on that. And now we've converted that to a path. So let me grab my selection tool, zoom out a bit. And now I'm going to turn this from a solid object into a uh, like an eyeglass frame. So to do that, I'm going to first make this a lighter shade of gray. And then I'm going to go to path and I will select linked path or linked offset. And that's going to create another copy of it behind it. So I'm only, I want to make that other copy black. So let me click on black. And I'm going to take this node and bring this out about that far. We want this node to be about that far. And that right, right about there looks good. And I will click this button again that says object to path. Now I'll grab my selection tool, hold shift and click on the gray object in the middle so that we have them both selected. And we're going to subtract them from each other by going to path and selecting difference. And once you do that, let's come over here to the fill and stroke menu. If you don't have your fill and stroke menu open, just come down here to the fill and just double click that and it should open over here on the right hand side. And I want to take this and bring the opacity down roughly in half. And once that's done, let's right click on this and go to duplicate. And I'm going to hold control and bring this object over here to the left like that. And I'm going to zoom in on this right here. And the reason why I made them halfway transparent is because I want to see where they line up. I want to take this object and I'm holding control the whole time I do this to lock it onto the horizontal axis. And I want to overlap, overlap this object about that far. And you can see the area where they overlap right about there. And I'm going to duplicate this object again. I'm going to right click it and go to duplicate. And I'm going to take this copy and put it up here. And I want to zoom in and I want to make this object. If I'm looking right about here, I want it to intersect with the other object right about there. And where I'm going with this is I'm going to create an object from this empty space in here. And I'm going to use that as sort of like the, uh, the edge of the eyeglass frame there. So once that's done, I'm going to position that right about there. You may want to try to visualize what this contour looks like going up top here. So if you may have to move it just to make it look more fluid, I think right about there looks pretty good. If it doesn't look perfect, don't worry about it. We're going to address that in just a moment. So let me move this in just a little more. And once that's done, I'm going to select all of these. So let me click and drag over all of them to select them. And now I'm going to go into my shape builder tool, which is over here. I'm going to click on that. 
and I want to make sure I have the addition option enabled. And then I'm going to click on this object right here and then this object right here. And it's going to make them into separate objects. And now I can go back to my selection tool and now I have that as a separate object. And what I want to do now is take just this object. I'm going to make this red just so I can differentiate it and hold control and shift and scale this up about that far. We want this to be a little bit bigger and then I'm going to bring this in and place it right about there. Now mine looks a little sloppy. There's some jagged edges in there. Don't worry about that. We're going to smooth that out in just a minute. The idea is we want to have this object that we can work with and we can use as that shape for the edge of the eyeglass frame. So let me move that out a little more. And once that's done, I'm going to hold shift and click on the other object so we have them both selected. And I will go into the shape builder tool again. And I just want to click and, click and drag a line going through those just to unify them all together. And then go back to the selection tool. And now we have something like that right there. So now that that's set, let's go to our nodes tool and let's go in here and clean this up. So if you notice over here, we have a bunch of nodes. That's what's giving it that uneven look. I'm going to take these three nodes over here to the left and I'm going to press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. And you should be able to take this handle right here and just jiggle it a bit and you'll see it straightens out. So we have a nice straight fluid line. And then I'll take this handle over here and just straighten that out a little bit. We want a nice fluid curve going through there. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. If you notice, there's an extra node in here. If there's any extra nodes, get rid of them. You only want one node there. And then I'm going to take this handle and bring that out. I want to make this handle so that it's going parallel with the other handle or the other side of the handle. And once it looks about parallel, you can hold the control key and then click the node and then it'll make it automatically smooth. And I'm going to take this and bring that in a little bit so it gives it more of a swoop. And now I'm going to cut off this little corner right here. So let me grab my pen tool, which is located over here. I'm going to click to add a point, hold the control button, bring the line straight down, click to add another point, and then add some more points going around the outside and, and then connect it back to the starting point. And I'm just going to bring this in a little more. Right about there looks good. And then I'll hold shift and click on the object so that we have them both selected. And once again, we'll go to path and select difference. And now we have that little notch there on the left-hand side. I'm going to shape this up a little more. Let me go back to my nodes tool. I'm going to grab this left edge right here and pull that out a little bit. And I'm going to round these corners just a tiny bit. So I'm going to come back up here to the add corners live path effect. And I'm going to select just those two corners and I'll grab this round knot right here and just round those corners a little bit. About that much looks good. And then I will click this button over here that says object to path. And there we go. I'm going to select just this object right here and I want to click on it again to get the rotation handles and I want to rotate this clockwise just a couple of degrees just to give it a little bit of a tilt. About that much looks good. Okay, so now I'll uh, duplicate it. I'll right click and go to duplicate. Hold control, bring this over to the right and then I want to flip this horizontally. To do that, I'm just going to press the letter H on my keyboard and it's going to flip it horizontally. And then I'll just move this over a little more just to space it out. You want to eyeball about how far apart these uh, lenses should be. I think right about there looks good. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle going through the, uh, the uh, space between these two objects. So let me grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to click and drag to draw a rectangle going through there. And I'm going to grab my selection tool. I want to make sure that the bottom of the rectangle ends where this curve before this curve begins over here. So if it's up here, it's about too high because this curve is already beginning. I want to bring it down here about that far where we still have a little bit of a straight edge there. And up here, I want to bring this up a little bit, maybe about that far. The placement up here isn't as important. As long as it's somewhere thereabouts, it should be pretty good. And now I will select everything here and go into my shape builder tool. And I'm just going to draw a line going through all of these objects here to make them one single object. Go back to the selection tool. And now we're going to shape this up so that it looks like this over here, what it's supposed to look like. So to do that, let me grab my nodes tool. I want to select these two nodes right here and I want to add a new node in the middle. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to this button at the top left corner that says insert new nodes and click on that. And I'll take just that node. I'm going to click on just that node and hold control and bring that down. And I want to make this into a symmetrical node. So I'll come back up here to the toolbar and I want to select this option that says make selected nodes symmetric. And that's going to give us this symmetrical node with these handles that move in and out uh, the same way. Then I want to select this node over here, 
hold shift, select this node over here so that we have them both selected. And I'll press delete on the keyboard to get rid of those nodes. And if you notice, we're starting to get a little bit of a, uh, we have a nice fluid dip in here. So let me move this up a little more. And I'm gonna move this handle out. I'm gonna hold control while I do this to keep it on its axis. And I'll move this one out about the same distance. And then I wanna take this one and just bring that in a little bit. And if I go back to my selection tool and click off of it, you can see uh, how it looks. It looks pretty fluid, but it could look a little better. So I'm gonna take this and bring that up a little more. That should help it look a little more even. Okay, that looks better. And now I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna use the nodes tool again to take this bottom edge and just bring this up like that. And to straighten this out, I'm gonna click on this node, take this handle and bring this straight up or not straight up, but going up at the angle. It wants, you want it to match the angle of the edge of this frame right here. So I'll bring that up about that far. And then I wanna take this node or this handle and do the same thing. We wanna bring it up about just as high. And again, we wanna use the same angle as the frame right there. And if I zoom out, you can see we are finished. I can take the opacity and bring it up to 100%. And as you can see, we have created those eyeglass frames with those really complicated contours using Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.